Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, October 5th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, how kinetic actions led to dead civilians and a flaming hospital. Then, did you know that human rights are no longer a top priority for the UK government? After that, Hillary, who spent most of her adult life surrounded by bodyguards, is coming for your guns. And what the Trans-Pacific Partnership means for you. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Yeah, I think that's what I mean, we call this piece, jail the TPP sons of bitches. But you know, I want to be honest, you know, that's that insulting women who had kids out of wedlock. I don't think that's that, you know, I'm not, I'm saying it's a great thing, but you know, uh, these guys are beyond bastard sons of bitches. Right, <laughs> right. I mean, we, we, we lose terminology for these type of people. I mean, they're beyond the, beyond the scope of, of the imagination even of our ancestors. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Well, you may have guessed it by now, but it is now officially announced, at least in the UK. Human rights are not a top priority. Actually, the top priority, they say, are trade agreements. And we're going to talk about the TPP and leadership changes in the Congress, how that's going to affect things. This story up on Infowars.com from The Independent says, human rights are no longer a, quote, top priority for the UK government, says the foreign office chief. Human rights are not the top priority, he admitted. Ministers put resources into supporting trade deals ahead of tackling injustice in other parts of the world, or maybe ahead of spying on their own citizens, violating their own laws. This is Sir Simon McDonald. He is permanent secretary at the Foreign Office. He said human rights no longer had the profile within his department that they had had in the past. The conservatives said now a prosperity agenda is further up the list. Well, what is that prosperity agenda? We've been told that uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, every nation that signs on to this, these trade uh, partnerships, we've got one for the Pacific, we've got one for the Atlantic and Europe that is coming up as well. Every one of the nations are told that uh, you're going to get wealthy at the expense of the other people. This is a great deal for you, which means that it's not such a good deal for the other countries, but everyone is hearing the same deal. Now they say they have finally reached the set agreement and they're going to start sending it out to the various nations to get passed. This is reported today by the Washington Post. They say deal reached on Pacific Rim trade pact and boost for the Obama economic agenda. Yes, this is part of his legacy. He cares so much about his legacy, doesn't care so much about the rule of law, doesn't care so much about the rights of individuals. This is a massive, massive move towards multinational corporate governance and subsidization. But it does also put out as quote unquote, setting the rules for 21st century trade. Now, actually what it is doing is setting the stage for world government. This is a key part of this, masquerading initially as an economic agreement. Now, the interesting thing about this is what we're already seeing some reactions from the corporations. Of course, the corporations know what's in this, we still haven't seen it. But the corporations know what's in it, they're reacting to it and their bought politicians are reacting to it. So let's kind of get an idea as to what's going on, even though we're still not allowed to see what's in this secret agreement. Big Pharma has seen it, Ford has seen it, other corporations have seen it and they're complaining about certain things. Orrin Hatch, for example, one of the big cheerleaders and supporters of Big Pharmaceuticals is not happy with the fact that they are going to shorten up the amount of the, the, the copyright 
period for new drugs from 12 years to five years. So he's talking about how he may not be supporting this. We also have in other countries, uh, people who are involved with the election cycle coming up this year, Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper, who is facing a tough re-election vote this year, is starting to back away from it. And the opposition party has said that it will not be bound by the terms of the deal. Now, understand this is a treaty, maybe that will be true. But you know, we look at this treaty that's going on in Syria, I'm sorry, with Iran, where uh, many in the Republican Party say they're not gonna be bound by that. Understand these are treaties, even though they don't call them treaties, even though they just call them agreements, and even though they skip the constitutional process for signing a treaty, they're nevertheless a treaty, they treat NAFTA as a treaty. Also, leaders of Australia, New Zealand, several other countries made tough compromises, and they will face stiff, stiff opposition at home. Now, how are some of the politicians who are running for president reacting to this? Well, Bernie Sanders has said, quote, Wall Street and other big corporations have won again. He's absolutely right. Donald Trump has criticized the trade deals, saying not that he opposes it on principle, not that he sees that there is massive global governance in the wings, uh, which is true. That's you know, Senator Sessions is one of the few people who took the time to actually read these agreements, to study these agreements, to see that they are living agreements. They will move as they wish after these things are passed. Of course, once they're presented, it's gonna be a straight up and down vote. There will be no modification, no debate. That was already decided by the fast track process. Hillary Clinton, who supported this while at the State Department, is now trying to back off a little bit, kind of sitting on the fence. She's already lost the support of the trade unions, so she may go for the corporations because she's lost a lot of big corporate backers. Now, the interesting, catch in this is how is it going to play out? Because John Boehner was all for the TPA as well as the TPP. He pushed very hard for that agreement. They're going to have to wait under the terms of the fast track agreement. They're going to have to wait 90 days until Obama gets it and signs it. And 60 of those days, it is supposed to be made available to the public, as I pointed out. We still haven't seen it, but of course the corporations know what's in it because they wrote it. They write our laws, not our lawmakers. Capitol Hill staffers said votes in the House and Senate are unlikely to happen before mid-April at the earliest. They say while the GOP has been more supportive of Obama's trade agenda, some conservatives have opposed a pact that was negotiated by a Democrat White House. And that's basically the, the issue that most of the Republican candidates, if they criticize it, say, I don't think he did a good deal. I don't want a trade agreement that was done by a Democrat. There are many more problems with it than that. That is a very simplistic opinion of this, but we need to get people to take a look at this to understand what is truly involved in it. Nevertheless, we'll take any kind of opposition we can get, even if it's for not a good reason or no reason at all. A Democrat, Rosa De Lauro, said that the administration is supposed to be fighting for the American public, not for high-priced lobbyists, but unfortunately, the administration's approach has been exactly the opposite. That's the opposition within the Democrat Party against Obama, against people like Hillary Clinton, and presumably Joe Biden, who hasn't made a position on this. Now, they say that it's going to evolve, of course, and we all know this. We've talked about this many times on InfoWars. It's going to be everything from agriculture and automobiles to intellectual property rights for pharmaceutical drugs and movies. That's the thing, one of the key issues here, and that is enacting permanent copyright and control over things and making sure that they have a monopoly over things as well as freedom of the internet. That's another big aspect of this. That's why it's not simply a trade agreement. This is not something that is free trade corporations versus labor unions. That's a very simplistic idea of this. This involves some of our core freedoms like internet freedoms. Now again, these 12 TPP nations compromise 40% of the world's gross domestic product. And again, as I pointed out, Orrin Hatch is upset about the reduction in terms of pharmaceutical companies' uh, patents on genetically engineered drugs, as well as others. Uh, Ron Wyden is for it. And as others have said, uh, they're concerned about how this is going to move. But this is what the New Zealand trade minister said. He said, long after details of things like tons of butter sold are regarded as a footnote in history, the bigger picture of what we achieve today will be what remains. And he goes on to say, in future years, we will be absolutely certain of the depth of achievement we reached at this point in our collective history. Yes, yes, this is about a lot more than how much butter is going to sell for. This is about restructuring, 
many of our fundamental rights. It is about restructuring our governments. It is about creating a global governance that is above the nations that create it. This is a very dangerous agreement. And beyond Senator Sessions, very few people are talking about this. We have talked about it at InfoWars. An article today from Kurt Nemo really cuts to the issues at stake. And he quotes uh, Zero Hedge saying today, packaged as a gift to the American people that will renew industry and make us more competitive, the Trans-Pacific Partnership is a Trojan horse. It is a coup by multinational corporations who want global subservience to their agenda. Buyer beware, citizens beware. And then Kurt Nemo sums it up, he says, if enacted, the TPP will ultimately reduce America to third world status. The global elite and their corporatist partners are determined to impoverish humanity, to consolidate wealth and power, to reinvent and modernize the feudal system of the Middle Ages, and TPP is their weapon of choice. I couldn't have said it better, that is precisely what we're looking at. It is not just corporate cronyism, it is global governance, and it is a global governance that is a feudal system. Now, Politico looks at it and says, well, not so fast. This is how this could die in Washington. And they talk about the different factions that are opposed to this. They say Donald Trump and Carly Fiorina have criticized it again, simply because it's coming from Obama. Marco Rubio, however, and Jeb Bush have spoken favorably over it. You know, Marco Rubio said that he voted for the fast track authority because he'd looked at the TPP agreement and read it. Many people have fact checked that. And you know, interestingly enough, as we pointed out, and it should be a warning signal to everybody that our elected representatives cannot see this without signing a non-disclosure agreement. They cannot talk to it up to the American people without a non-disclosure agreement. Now, of course, Senator Sessions did in broad terms, nothing happened to him, others could have done it. But because they have to sign an agreement before they can go in and look at this agreement, they went back and they looked at the, at the guest book, I guess, and they found that Rubio had never signed in to read this agreement. So I don't really think he did. Now there's others like Mitch McConnell say that they're very concerned because it has some things that are gonna prevent tobacco companies from suing governments over anti-tobacco laws. You know what, a lot of this is just posturing. A lot of this is gonna be people like Mitch McConnell and Orrin Hatch and others who are gonna say, well, you know, I'm gonna oppose this in public and I think they're just holding out for some more money. They just want a better deal. They just wanna be paid more by these corporate lobbyists. They say, to be sure, the betting money is that this will pass, albeit after a long and loud debate. So that's precisely what we're looking at. And they point out that it passed 60 to 38, that's the, uh, the authorization for fast track. See, that's where they betrayed us. This is a treaty, it should have required a straight up and down vote according to the Constitution, 67 votes in the Senate, or actually two thirds of whoever is there to be exact. Nevertheless, they passed it 60 to 38. They passed it with a much smaller margin in the House, and that is where it gets interesting. Who will replace Speaker Boehner? CNN reports why the House Speaker's race just got nasty. Now, of course, we had Kevin McCarthy, who was a front runner. His status meant that the race was essentially set up as a proxy vote on Boehner's tenure, they said. Now, today we had Congressman Jason Chaffetz enter the race, he said, you don't just give automatic promotion to the existing leadership team. He said, that doesn't signal change. I think they want a fresh face and a fresh new person. Well, that's just exactly what we're gonna get, isn't it? We're going to get a fresh new face, but are we gonna get somebody who is fundamentally different from John Boehner? Or is it just going to be a new face that they put in front of us? Now, one of the reasons that McCarthy fell out of favor was because of an interview that he did on Fox News last Wednesday. In that interview, he suggested that the House's select committee investigating Benghazi had been driven by politics against Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. That outraged everybody in both parties. And so that kind of made him open for being taken down, even though he had the backing of Paul Ryan, the backing presumably of John Boehner. Now Chaffetz has entered the race. Sources, however, in the Freedom Caucus said on Sunday after he made his announcement that he'll have to explain his positions, including his backing of an online sales tax position and his decision to punish a North